Brandon Sanderson's record-breaking Kickstarter features three books in The Cosmere. And no, they have nothing to do with baseball. Actually, more to do with Pocahontas. Hi, Internet. I'm Steve. Welcome to Raffo. The Cosmere is the shared universe that contains all of Brandon Sanderson's adult fiction. Most of Brandon Sanderson's adult fiction. These ones. Now, you may be thinking, wait, that's like 20 books. They all take place on the same planet? It's 25 at this point, and no. All the stories of the Cosmere take place in the same little globular cluster in a dwarf galaxy far, far away. The four main Cosmere series take place on different planets, with select novellas, graphic novels, and three out of four secret projects, each on their own worlds. Here, everything exists in three realms, physical, spiritual, and cognitive. This can be tricky to understand for a newcomer. Fundamentally, every rock and tree and creature has a life, has a spirit, has a name. Take a chair, for example. The physical realm is where the body of the chair is, where it gets sat upon and where its atoms get interacted with. Its life is in the physical. But where did the chair come from? What's it made of? How old is it? Who's sat on it before? There are certain aspects of its identity and relationships to the things around it that are considered part of its spirit. What makes this chair different from any other chair? The cognitive realm is the realm of perception and thought. So here we'd see the chair's own thoughts about itself, or other people's thoughts about the chair. What's its name, and how is it defined? It might sound weird, but consider, physically it's a chair, but depending on how it's most used, it may instead be considered a stool, a shelf, or a club. It may be fantasy, but physics still very much exists, and the division of matter and energy has a third sibling joining the party called investiture. Investiture is basically divine power, magic, in its most basic form. Thermodynamics and special relativity are still at play here. Matter, energy, or investiture cannot be created or destroyed, and all matter contains some degree of energy and investiture. There are different manifestations, or ways to use that investiture, explained in different books. Surge binding in the Night's Radiant and the Stormlight Archive, allomancy and burning metals in Mistborn, awakening with breath in Warbreaker, and even just natural phenomena on various planets, like Shades or Spren. All of these different magic systems, while appearing wildly distinct, actually function along the same basic principles. You need to have the right stuff, with the right connections, and intend to actually do the thing. Again, analogous to physical, spiritual, and cognitive. Specific applications vary, but that's basically it. All investiture, being essentially divine power, is related to a specific shard. To explain, way back in the history of this universe, there was a being, or force, or entity known as Adenalsium, basically God, that was murdered in a back alley by 16 people. Jury's out on if that was a good thing or not, we currently lack sufficient evidence to convict. Adenalsium's power then got split into 16 different shards, each of which also had an aspect of divine personality or intent that got taken by those 16 people. These then functionally became deities, a pantheon each driven by a specific motivation. Honor, preservation, autonomy, and even some less than cheerful ones like ruin or odium divine hatred. These folks spread throughout their little galaxy, often using some of their power to guide the development of life and civilization on various planets, as well as influencing the magic systems that arise there. Honor and cultivation invested on Roshar, so surge binding in the Stormlight Archive requires honoring oaths and self-development. Native Nalthians in Warbreaker are endowed with a bit of extra investiture, which they can use to endow other objects with life. Virtuosity is involved in Yumi and the Nightmare Painter, whose magic is tied to artistic expression. But again, all these different systems function along the same general principles, because they are all part of the same universe. The idea for the Cosmere was originally inspired, like many things in speculative fiction, by Isaac Asimov. 
most famous for the Foundation series and his Three Laws of Robotics, as well as writing like a million books. Thirty years after he published the Foundation and the Robot series, he tied them together in a single history, though it was riddled with inconsistencies and contradictions. Brandon figured that starting with a grand unified series behind the scenes from the beginning would help minimize continuity problems, as well as provide more chances of actually getting published. The second of five secretly connected standalones is is easier to market than book two in a five book series. And that's really how it started, minor connections behind the scenes. Initially they were pretty small, easter eggs basically. A guy named Hoyd popping up, phrases from one planet being used on another, character descriptions or magic matching some stranger. These ties aren't necessary to understand what's going on in the story, and they don't really distract you if you aren't looking for them. I'm looking for them. Recently, as worlds get into more contact with each other and societies advance, these minor connections are coming more and more to the surface. This last secret project, Yumi and the Nightmare Painter, has ties to at least five different stories. The brilliant thing, though, is that it's still not necessary to read everything in order to enjoy it. Yumi is a great starting point to the Cosmere because the story is so good, and it's excellent for Cosmere veterans because there's so much to find. In whatever order you read them, you'll get things out of it. In fact, I recommend going back to the same book multiple times in order to truly read and find out. Thank you for watching! As always, thank you to my patrons who get early access to all my videos, sneak peeks at what's coming, and exclusive merchandise. In fact, Doug, Matt, Steve, and Data Gremlin, and also Chris, I'm gonna need your t-shirt sizes. You too, viewer, can acquire these perks by joining my Patreon. For those of you more well-read in the Cosmere, next week we'll be diving into the wider connections in the Dawn Shard novella that takes place before Rhythm of War. So if you haven't yet, yeah, I already said it. What I love most about rereads is you cannot read the same novel twice. The reader's always changing, always growing.